Good morning, and welcome to another week of the video worship service here on the Park Avenue channel. I know that the times we're living in can make people kind of nervous given the circumstances of our world. And now we go and add one more caveat to or circumstance to the world in which we live, which can cause us to feel uneasy and create some intrepidation. I pray that through these circumstances that we do not necessarily look at them and ask why necessarily, but more importantly we look at them and say, God please help us. Today in our lesson we're going to be talking a little bit about some of this stuff, but most importantly we're here to worship, to sing some songs, to have a lesson, and have some time around the table. It is in these moments that it draws us closer and nearer to our Lord Jesus Christ and it keeps reminding us how important it is for our worship as believers. And I hope that these pr provide you with a substitute from the real thing that we desperately need. And we hope at some time in the future most of us will be in this building celebrating and, and worshiping God together. So sit back and we'll get ready and have some singing. Set thy glory above the heavens, will praise thy holy name forever, evermore. Good morning, church. This week, a unique thing happens in our nation, or in our world. On Wednesday, uh, I think it's March the 2nd this year, will be a day of Lent. It's one of those moments where you will see people go around who have little brown spots, black spots on the top of their forehead where they have had... Uh, ashes placed on their forehead. And Lent, of course, is, uh, is something that happens among a, a few various faiths of Jesus Christ. It hasn't been a function of our belief system through the Church of Christ that uh, we have uh, participated in that. We put no great emphasis on it. But I understand how it was, it did come about. Lent was something that uh, is a, precedes 40 days before Easter, the resurrection. 
And I know how they get the story of the 40 days. We're going to take a look at just exactly that concept, the 40 days in the wilderness of Jesus, what it means, and why it, did Matthew put that in there for us to see and understand about the story of Jesus. Have you ever wondered how long you can endure a crisis in your life? You know, how much an adult can endure is a dependent is a question that depends upon the circumstances and the condition of the individual. If you've ever been stranded in the wilderness, or maybe you were caught in a burning building, or maybe you went scuba diving and your tank ran out of oxygen. According to the National Geographic magazine, our ability to do things they've measured. Most humans can survive for just two to three minutes without air. But they did note that with training it is possible to hold your breath for 11 minutes. Now, humans can survive for just 10 minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And children can only survive a few minutes at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And humans can endure barely 30 minutes of exposure to 40 degree water. And humans can only survive for up to 7 days without drinking water. And humans can only survive for about 45 days without food. Without a doubt, we are fragile beings. But having said that, we can condition ourselves to withstand things that we didn't think was possible. And with this Wednesday marking the Lent, it displays a form of repentance and fasting and today the practice is to give up something that is important to you. Those who will participate in Lent will either give up, you know, something. Some of them give up TV. Some of them give up uh, something they eat. Some of them give up hobbies. Some of them give up circumstances. Everybody sets aside something to say to themselves, I'm going to take this away from myself to remind me that uh, what's really important. I place God above these things. One family decided to do this as a group. The mom and dad sat down with their three little daughters, ages 11, 8, and 6, and told them what they were going to do, that they were going to give up. The mom and dad said, we're giving up sweets for the next 40 days. Well, and they were explaining it to the children. And the first, the oldest daughter said to their mom and dad, said, that's what I will do too. And uh, they just smiled real proudly as their oldest daughter said that. And the second daughter, who was about eight, looked at her mom and dad and said, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Give up sweets too for the next 40 days. Well, now they're thinking, oh, they really do understand this whole concept and and they get while we're doing this and you know and everything and then the six-year-old they look at the six-year-old and the six-year-old looks back at them and you could as you know with children you could see the wheels turning inside their head and then she looks at her mom and dad she says well I've decided I'm gonna give up consequences for the next 40 days <laughs> well you gotta appreciate that oh you know you you gotta realize what she didn't want, she was willing to give up it at any cost. Well, that's sort of like, isn't that the human condition? It truly is. We, we want, we really don't want hard things in our life. And that is the one thing that I do appreciate about those who will practice Lent. Because they're saying for 40 days, I'm going to give up something that I do like. Just to tell myself, that God is more important than anything in my life. And it is an attempt to recreate also and a remembering of what Jesus went through through the 40 days that he had in the wilderness. If you remember the story, Jesus comes to John the Baptist and is baptized. And as soon as the dove came down on him at, for, as a witness to the fact that this was 
Jesus, God's Son. It says, The Spirit led him off into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. And we have that story in our Bible in Matthew chapter 4. But the question I want us to, as we read this text, the question that I want us to ask is, what prepared Jesus for such a task? In Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verse 1, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After lasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil, devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. For us today, what is our wilderness like? This past week, as we all know very well that Russia invaded Ukraine. And on top of all the circumstances that we got going on in our world of still the lingering effects of the pandemic, the high in cost of living today, the inflation at unbelievable rates, we have a world that is just absolutely... Uh, paying no attention to any kind of concepts of God. Sin is all around us. The world is in what, it, what would seem to, I think most people who are followers of Christ, shambles. If you ever thought you were possibly living in the wilderness, which wilderness is a uh, means a place of wildness. Well, I kind of feel like, folks, we might be in our wilderness right now more than we've ever experienced before. The world is on the on the brink, and and I don't say that in order to cause you to be afraid. I say that in order that you understand it's vitally important that you recognize the circumstances in which you and I live. It's important that we understand the world is in peril. But here we are. So what do you think we need to be prepared for? What tasks had Jesus in preparation for his wilderness experience dealt with in his life? I think the first thing that pops out to me is Jesus demonstrated right from the get-go his dis dependence on what God said and not what he understood. You and I do not have the capabilities to completely understand what's good, better, and best, what's right and wrong. Our judgments are not what determines those facts. God can. And God is the only one who can. Remember, I bring this up a lot, but it is vitally important. What was the sin of Adam and Eve? They wanted to decide. They wanted to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil so they could decide what was right and what was wrong. And that was not given to them. That is the ultimate sin you and I both deal with. And Jesus, from the very get-go with dealing with Satan tells Satan it is written 
It's not what I believe. It is written. Of course, Jesus knew, but acting as a human, though God, showed us what was important. He went straight straight to what God had to say about how we should act and how we should live. And what was important, what wasn't important. What did you do and what didn't you do. All those things. If you and I want to know how to navigate this wilderness of life that we're living in, we desperately need to have the Word of God. And we just can't get it just every now and then. That's one of the purposes that we meet as often as we do, is to, first of all, study. To glean information so that we're able to uh, understand what is the good, better, and best of life and what is the bad and the worst of life. Because unless we do, we're going to maybe depend upon our own understandings and we'll make a mistake that will put us in peril. The next thing the wilderness will do to you is it will cause you to question God. And you will need to determine during the dark moments of your life who are you going to depend on? It's kind of one of Satan's uh, things. He says, you well, you know, why don't you test God to see how much how dependable he really is? That was Satan's way of saying to him, you know, do you really depend on God? In the middle of the darkness of the wilderness. Imagine, you're stuck in the woods. There are no lights. Uh, there is no moon at this point in time. Let's say it's a moonless night. It is so dark, you can't see your hand in front of your face. In that moment, who are you going to depend on? Who are you going to trust? Who is going to keep you safe? In our lives, when tragedy comes, sometimes our first reaction is to figure out how do I fix this and how do I get everything go to work out the way I want it to work out. Depending on God is hard. It really is. It doesn't come naturally. It is a learned trait. It is a buffeting of the body that Paul spoke about that where you say, God, you're more important than anything else. I'm going to depend upon you no matter what happens. That is the other element of the 40 days that Jesus went through. Obedience and dependence. And finally, <clears throat> what Satan tried to get Jesus to uh, recognize, when faced with yourself, what do you really want in your life? Remember, they're at the top of the mountain on the very last temptation and Satan says to him, I'll give all these to you if you'll just follow me. And that's when Jesus says, worship the God only. You and I, in, when life is at its bleakest moment, you will trade things or trade your life with Jesus Christ in order to get what you really want out of life. You and I, as we deal with our lives, are going to experience many things. And it is at those moments where, we, where they bring right to your face what you really think is important. Pandemics will do that. Inflation unrest, war. It's amazing what humans will give up in order to have something they feel like they can depend on and trust. And it takes us some faith to depend and trust on God, doesn't it? The experience that you and I will have will illuminate what and who we trust. So what do you do with the information? When you find out that you don't know what you should know, 
because you're not reading. When you find out who you're really depending on and when you find out what you really want in your life, it will be that moment that Lent says you repent and make adjustments in your life. There's nothing wrong with us doing that. We try to do it every Sunday around the table to remind ourselves. And that is a good time to do that. But there are many times in your life and one of the functions that happens in worship, whether it can happen a little here, but it happens a great deal when you're around all your brothers and sisters in Christ where you share that devotion thought of what's really, really important in your life. God bless, and I'll see you next week. Every week, we come to this moment and we remind ourselves who we trust, who we depend upon, and how we know the truth of Jesus Christ. The fact that I can't be good enough in life. I needed Jesus to rescue me and save me from myself, from my sin, and ultimately, from destruction. So we come here every week to remember the broken body and the shed blood that made all of that possible for you and I. So that when life comes, I know who I can depend upon. I'm reminded by this very act of itself who I can trust. And who should be the most important person and entity in my life when faced with the circumstances of the world? Who do I choose? Because of this moment, I know I need to choose Jesus. I need to choose His grace and righteousness for my life. So we come here every day, every week to give thanks for the fact that Jesus did what I couldn't do. Would you bow with me, please? Our Father, which art in heaven, we humbly approach your throne of grace and mercy, Father, ever mindful of the fact that without your Son, Jesus, and His act of obedience and love, we would have no hope. And Father, we lift up the name of Jesus, and Father, we pray that Jesus, as our Savior, Lord, and Teacher, will teach us the actions that we need in our lives, the understandings that we need to have, and the devotion and love that we need to have for you and your Son. Father, may bless this cup and bless this bread, and may with it, through them we gain a deeper understanding of our dependence and need for you in our life. Through the power of the resurrected Son do we pray. Amen. Well, listen. Glad you tuned in. I will give you a little up, if you're interested, next Sunday from the pulpit, 
uh, Sean Patrick is going to be preaching. Uh, I'm going to be here, but I'm going to be gone all during this week, so in order so that makes it a little bit easier on me. He's going to preach for me. So if you'd like to come hear Sean next Sunday, please do. It would really encourage him if you were happen to be here. Um, otherwise, I will have a video up next week. I'll be putting it up before I leave. so Or doing it before I leave. So it will be here for you for those who can't come. God bless, and we'll see you next week.